developments right here in Kenya. And this is centered on the release of the official 2019 population census figures. Approximately 47.5 million people in Kenya as it stands. That's a registered population growth of approximately 47.6%. But, but as we appreciate this population growth, I think it's important to know that the census actually plays a part in so many factors um, right here in Kenya from the electoral boundaries informing the boundary decision by the IEBC, the referendum question which has been touted time and time again ever since the 2017 general elections and of course looking forward into 2022. What does all this mean in regards to the politics of numbers? And that's why we have Steve Ogutu, who is an analyst right here in studio, to help us break down these numbers and take a look at what this potentially means for the country. Thank you so much for making Thanks time. Thanks for having me, Jesse. All right, now, uh, Steve, as we take a look at the numbers, I mean, it's proper to appreciate the good work done by KNBS, but such statistics matter in Kenyan politics. I mean, where voting pattern is generally predicted along ethnic lines. You know, we come from a specific region and right. henceforth. But looking at the later census report, how does this inform the political outlook of the country um, going into the 2022 general elections? I mean, like you've said, you know, politics generally is about numbers, you know, and um, already you've started seeing some political leaders um, coming out and, you know, stating that they are against um, um, the, 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 the statistics or the numbers that um, have been um, that have cut, that have that have um, you know come out from from their areas you yes. know like Tarakanithi, Meru, and, and many other and a few other areas you know so it shows you that um, uh, you know people are very concerned about. Um, about about population because it really, especially political leaders, because th 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 those are the people who will vote for them come 2022. And right now we have the the referendum question that's 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 just coming that's coming coming up um, uh, pretty soon uh, based on what we are hearing from the political class. You know, so it's a really um, serious issue, and 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 I think. Um, uh, the Kenya, the, the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics um, should take some of these concerns seri seriously and just see how best the stakeholders involved can have a discussion around it um, and solve the grievances that could be arising from uh, the, the result that were released yesterday. All right, now yeah. let, let's talk about um, politics of development right now, just a paradigm shift, which also goes hand in hand with the population of a certain given area. I mean, resources are allocated as per the population. And I mean, it's all about sharing the national cake, as we so fondly put it. Now, bearing in mind that there are some leaders who have come out to dispute the latest report, just as you've mentioned, I mean, does this actually poke holes into the accuracy of the, you know, statistics we Least, uh, in terms of misinterpretation of numbers and does this actually play a part um, in terms of the shareable national revenue definitely you know population is one of the characteristics that is used to determine um, you know the revenue share you know for, for counties and for other government development initiatives, you know. So I think um, as seeing these political leaders, especially governors coming out and saying, you know, we are disputing these numbers mm -hmm. is not really strange because they know what those numbers to mean even in terms of budget allocation, um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, especially with, with the, this, the devolution uh, system and uh, the schedule for our constitution, mm -hmm. yeah. Now, in terms of 2022 political formations, I don't know if this might be a key factor in terms of political realignments of which we so often see right before, you know, general elections. Now, taking a look at the vote-rich areas, and I think this will be key areas for mm. politicians when they're garnering for votes come 2022. Yeah. What say this in terms of the numbers influence? What's your take on it? <laughs> I think, I think I think what we are going to see going forward is we'll begin seeing, um, of course, political formations targeting certain areas that are perceived to have high, you know, population, 
all those are the referred to as uh, stronghold based on the population's population density. So we'll begin seeing uh, political parties trying to target those areas, you know, areas like, like um, in the western part of Kenya and also um, central part of Kenya, like um, the Mount Kenya region, and of course Nairobi, you know. So we start seeing a lot of um, political activities going around, I mean, happening in those places just to start um, selling the agenda um, ahead of 2022 uh, elections. Is this bargaining power in terms of um, elections and also in terms of, you know, sharing the national cake? I mean, my people represent a certain statistic in our population, Kenya, hence a certain percentage of the national allocation should come to us. Exactly. I mean, um, if we look at the current setup, even in the, in the current government, you know, uh, look at the distribution of positions, uh, the national positions like um, the cabinet secretary positions, uh, PSS, um, parastatal positions. They are distributed based on um, uh, based on you know uh, uh, which which how, what I mean what amount I mean which how many people did you bring on board in terms of. Uh, in terms of votes, you know, mm -hmm. um, take an example of you know the deputy president sides and, uh, and the president side. You know, you can see how um, numbers play when it comes to the share sharing of such uh, national positions. So it tells you that um, it's a pretty serious um, uh, matter when it comes to to, to politics. Uh, yeah, speaking of yeah. something equally serious in terms of the day-to-day -day running of the government, which is, you know, inculcated of three arms, the executive, legislature, and judiciary. Now, the judiciary arm of the government is um, facing budgetary cuts. The Treasury slashed the judiciary's budget by $3 billion last on September, citing shortfalls in revenue and the need for funds in terms of the Big Four agenda um, that is under President Uhuru Kenyatta. Uh, the judiciary had requested 31.2 billion Kenya shillings. Um, a parliament allocated 14.5, and now the Treasury slashed, uh, slashed it to 11.5. Needless to point out, um, service delivery will definitely be jeopardized in the judiciary. We saw the Chief Justice David Maraga keenly highlight this. But in terms of the fight against corruption and the fair dispensation of justice, we might be looking at these two critical avenues being affected. What say you about this? Man, I think uh, yesterday I had a chance to really uh, watch the entire press conference mm -hmm. by David Maraga. And I could tell he's a, he's a very frustrated person. And a lot of um, issues he raised are very legitimate issues. You know, um, you know judiciary, just like parliament and um, the executive, you know, is an independent organ of the government. And I think the executive has been trying to behave like it's the big brother. You know, it's now captured parliament. Like, parliament, anything that the executive want done, parliament has to approve. And right now they're trying to capture a very critical part of our constitutional democracy, the judiciary, which I don't think is, is a good thing for, for, for a democracy, a young democracy like, like Kenya. So I hope that um, they are going to find a, a way to, to solve this matter. And like you've said correctly, you know, um, they, there's a lot of um, services that are going to be cut and a lot of initiatives that the, the, the judiciary had started. I had the CJ talking about initi initiatives like the virtual courts, mm -hmm. uh, the mobile courts, and also putting up buildings um, so that citizens can access justice. You know, but all these with these budget cuts are going to, to, to be put in a, in a, in a, in a halt. And I think that um, for a government that's saying, that has been saying that it's committed to accelerating justice, uh, access for the common monarchy, it is very ironical for the same government to behave as if it's attacking the judiciary. And I think this is not actually strange for us. You know, back in 2017, when the current CJ nullified the 2017 elections, uh, we had the president came out and said, we are going to revisit. So some guys are wondering, like, is this how he's revisiting? Um, uh, uh, you know, is, is this what he meant when he said he's going to revisit uh, that issue? 
so I think um, there is need to have a very sober dialogue about it mm -hmm. and put egos aside and put the public interest at the forefront of, what, of it all. Oh, well, we'll definitely get to see how all this cumulates and actually develops in terms of the brotherliness of these arms of the government, right. the judiciary and the executive. Thank you so much, Steve Ogutu, for making time. Thanks for having me, Jesse. All right, thank you for your contribution to Bottom Line Africa. All right, now let's continue.